doesn't matter how long you've been going through the difficult time in your life, you are always above it because you serve a God who is greater than your situation. Siempre vas a estar arriba de la situación porque sirves a un Dios que es grande y poderoso. And there is nothing impossible for him. I don't care how long you've been going through it, you're still above it. You're above the anxiety attacks. You're above the depression. You're above the hardship. You're above the brokenness. You're above the way you've been feeling. You're above the times that you feel like a failure. You are above it, and God is reminding you tonight there is no situation greater than you are. There is no circumstance greater than you are. There is no storm greater than you are. You are above. Hallelujah. Right there where you are, say, Lord, speak to my life. I need to hear your word. I need to know you're with me. I need to hear your voice. Dile, Señor, habla mi vida. Necesito escuchar tu palabra. Necesito saber que estás conmigo. Y necesito escuchar tu voz. Father God, I pray that the hearts and the ears of your people will be open to receive everything you have for them tonight. I bind any hindrances, I rebuke anything that would try to interfere with your word going forth. Holy Spirit of God, manifest right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, take over every heart, every soul, every spirit. Have your way, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah, if you have your Bibles with you tonight, I'm going to ask you to open to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 12. Voy a pedir que abres tus Biblias al libro de Nehemiah, capítulo 4, versículo 12. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. The word of the Lord says, The Jews who lived near the enemy came and told us again and again, they will come from all directions and attack us. So I placed armed guards behind the lowest parts of the wall in the exposed areas. I stationed the people to stand guard by families armed with swords, spears, and bows. Verse 14. Then as I looked over the situation, Notice that it doesn't say, then I looked up at the situation. It says, I looked over the situation. I called together the leaders and the people and said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your friends, your families, and your home. You may be seated tonight. We are dismissed. Just play. The word of the Lord says that the Jews who lived near the enemy camp, they came and told us again and again that they're coming from all directions. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems like sometimes when people want to come and give you negativity or come and tell you things that people are saying, they like to include a lot of people. You know what I mean? Sister Mel, you got me, right? A veces que cuando la gente quiere venir en contra de ti y quieren hablar negativa, Y quieren hablar de ti. Y quieren decir que hay mucha gente que está en contra de ti. No pueden decir, yo creo. Dicen, todos están diciendo. Anybody understand me or not? They don't just say, I, I think that, you know, your hair is too big. They say, you know, everybody's saying that your hair is too big and they can't see. You know, I... I remember that um, I was in junior high and I was in seventh grade. I don't even think I ever shared this story with my family. But y'all are going to hear it all together for the first time. I was in seventh grade and in my gym class in basketball, I was real good and stuff, we would play basketball and in the gym they would play music real loud. And so we would all take turns singing. Now I'm not much of a singer, I try. Yo no canto, pero trato. And so I remember as we were singing, it was my turn. And I started singing. I don't even remember what song it was. I'll just say it was uh, Hosanna. I'll just say that, okay? And I remember I started singing, and a lot of my friends were like, Wow, Marissa, we didn't know you could sing like that. You know, and those mis 
amigas, muchas de mis amigas estaban, wow, Marisa, tú cantas tan bien. And so I started feeling pretty confident. Y yo estaba teniendo un poco confianza que yo estaba cantando bien. Well, the next day, a friend of mine comes up and she says, you know, Marisa, we were all talking. We were all talking. Y me dice, Marisa, estábamos todos, estábamos hablando, todos, todos. And we think you sing kind of nasally. You know, I was like, what does that even mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I didn't understand it. I mean, they said, todos estaban diciendo que tú cantas por la nariz. And she said that you sing nasally, you kind of like sing through your nose. That doesn't even make sense, does it, Sister Sonia? It doesn't even make sense. Sister Sonia is getting upset. Who said it? Who did that, Marissa? You tell me, right? I see it. And so I remember that she, she came up and she said that. She said they were all saying, you know, we were all saying. But I mean, you can work on it and it's something you can improve. Pero puedes trabajar. And then she tries to cover it up a little bit. And I remember that after that, my confidence in my vocals came down. Mi confianza en como yo cantaba se fue para abajo. Did you ever know that, Melina? Did I ever tell you about that story? She's like, no. And so, and I remember that I started feeling very not very good when it came to singing. Yo, yo pensaba, well, maybe I'm not that good of a singer. Maybe singing is not my calling. Maybe singing is not my gift. Quizás cantando no es mi don. Quizás cantando no es para mí. And I, so I started feeling like, like this. But see, I have a family who doesn't let me think bad about myself. Yo tengo una familia que no me dejen que yo siento mal de mí. See, I have, I have a big sister who tells me that I'm the best. I have a mama and a daddy who are constantly telling me that I'm anointed and called and that I'm powerful and I'm used by God. So that over, you know, that was that overrided or however you would say that, that overtook everything that they had put in my life. Todo lo que ellos me habían dicho, mi mamá y papá me dijeron, tú eres la mejor, tú cantas tan bien, Dios tiene un plan para ti y hay, hay un llamado sobre tu vida cuando tú, and I remember that, The, the thing that really helped me is my dad set up a sound system in the garage and he went and bought me a soundtrack. Do you remember that, Dad? It was Redeemer. It was the one, you know, and I know my Redeemer lives. I was singing nasally, right? And so he, was, he set up a sound system in the garage and he bought me that soundtrack and he put me to sing it in the garage and he would sit there and he would cry and he would be just me and him and he would be in the presence of God as I sang and that right there was a moment that I realized it doesn't matter what everybody was getting together to say, God has a plan for my life. Y en ese momento yo sentí, no importa lo que todos estaban diciendo que yo no cantaba bien, Dios tiene un plan para mi vida. Now I want you to understand something. Nehemiah is saying right here that the enemies all begin to say, all the enemies are, a lot of people are coming against you. Y él está diciendo en este capítulo, mucho de tus enemigos, todos los enemigos de alrededor están viniendo contra ti. But I want you to understand something. You can either take it like it's a discouragement. He could have either said, you know what? They're all coming against me. We need to run. Or you can take it like, you know what? They're all, the Lord is warning me in order for me to prepare myself to do what I need to do to win this war. Y él podía verlo como, ay, necesito detenerme y correr porque yo tengo miedo. O es algo que Dios me está enseñando para que yo pueda prepararme para conquistar y para hacer lo que necesito hacer en esta batalla. See, the Lord gives us warnings. And many times in our situations, He allows us to know beforehand. He gives you warnings. This job is not a good job for you, but Lord, it pays well. This job is not a good job for you, but Lord, it's, it's, it's easy. This job is not the job for you. And we take it anyway, and then we're miserable in the position we're in. But God had taken time to warn you ahead of time. Pero Dios ya te estaba diciendo que no era para ti. He tells us ahead of time. He shows us what isn't good for us. Él nos está enseñando las cosas que no son buenas para nosotros. He shows us the things that aren't going to be good to our spirit. He shows us the things that are only going to bring discouragement, that are going to bring hurt, that are going to bring pain, that are going to bring hardship into our lives. He warns you ahead of time, but many times we don't take the warning, so we fall into situations that we should have never been in. 
pero, pero porque no queremos escuchar lo que Dios está diciendo, estamos en situaciones donde no deberemos estar. He wants us to prepare mentally and spiritually for the battles that we may face. Él nos, nos, nos está diciendo que necesitamos preparar mentalmente, espiritualmente, para las cosas que van a venir en contra de nosotros. He lets us know that we may face some difficult times in our lives. Él nos deja saber que vamos a confrontar dificultades en nuestras vidas. So he warns us ahead of time. Y él, él nos enseña de antemano las cosas que no son buenas para nosotros. But people of God, it's up to us to take the warning and to prepare ourselves, to prepare our families, to prepare our finances, to prepare our minds para, para poder preparar nuestras mentes, para poder preparar nuestras familiares, para poder preparar nuestros hogares por lo que va a venir. When you're prepared, the hardship seems like it's a little easier to face. Amen. The word of God says as we go on. Then as I looked over the situation, and I want you to, I want to stay there for a moment. Because the word of God doesn't say that as he looked up to the situation. It says he looked over the situation. Meaning that he had all power and authority over the situation that he was in at that very moment. Come on, somebody. Queriendo decir que él tenía todo autoridad. Que él tenía todo poder sobre la situación de cual él estaba en este momento. Y a veces que nosotros sentimos como estamos abajo de la situación, la situación está arriba de nosotros y no podemos aguantarlo y no podemos cargarlo, pero Dios nos está diciendo en su palabra que Él estaba mirando hacia arriba de la situación. And so many times in our lives we feel like we are beneath the situation. Come on, somebody who knows what I'm talking about. You feel like you're beneath the situation. You feel like you're under the situation. You feel like it has power over you. It has authority over you. And you keep looking up hoping that it's going to end. The situation is so much bigger than you. But I'm here to let somebody know tonight that the word of God said he was looking over the situation meaning you have the authority over your circumstance. You have authority over the sickness. You have authority over the difficulty. You have authority over the financial debt. You have authority over the depression. You have authority over the anxiety. You have authority over the divorce knocking at your door. You have authority over the storms that are coming against you in your life. You are not beneath your situation. Your situation is beneath you. And somebody's got to believe it. Somebody's got to receive it. Somebody's got to know it tonight. Alguien tiene que creerlo. Alguien tiene que recibirlo. Alguien tiene que saberlo con todo su corazón que la situación está abajo de mis pies. La situación no tiene, no tiene autoridad sobre tú. Ti. Tú tienes autoridad sobre tu situación. Tienes autoridad sobre la enfermedad. Tienes autoridad sobre las, las dificultades financieras. Tienes autoridad sobre el divorcio que está tratando de venir en tu hogar. Tienes autoridad sobre todo lo que está pasando en tu, en, en tu casa. You have authority over the bad spirits that have been trying to come into your house. Somebody needs to know that right now. The bad spirits that you have been feeling have been trying to come against your home. God is saying right now, you have authority. You look over it. You have authority above it. It doesn't conquer you. It doesn't have power over you. It doesn't run your life. You give it permission. And tonight, God is reminding you right now. Y Dios te está recordando aún hoy mismo. Tú tienes autoridad. Sometimes we forget the authority that we have because we feel like we've been going through something so long. It doesn't matter how long you've been going through the difficult time in your life. You are always above it because you serve a God who is greater than your situation. Siempre vas a estar arriba de la situación porque sirves a un Dios que es grande y poderoso. And there is nothing impossible for him. I don't care how long you've been going through it, you're still above it. You're above the anxiety attacks. You're above the depression. You're above the hardship. You're above the brokenness. You're above the way you've been feeling. You're above the times that you feel like a failure. You are above it and God is reminding you tonight. There is no situation greater than you are. There is no circumstance greater than you are. There is no storm greater than 
to know that tonight. The difficulties in your life are beneath you. They will only reach to you if you let them. Solamente te van a alcanzar si los dejas. Have you ever have you ever heard when when they say you need to rise above it? I'm here to let you know you are already above it. But it's up to us whether we allow the situation to rise to where we are. But tonight, I'm so glad that you're here. Because tonight, as a people, as a people, we are reminded that we are above the situation and it's not getting to me. I'm too high for the situation to reach. You may be, you may think that the financial difficulty in your life is, is going, is, is difficult. And I understand it is, but you're still above it. You still can call on the owner of all the gold and all the silver. Todavía puedes clamar hacia el Dios que tiene todo el plata y todo el oro. You can still call upon the one that knows no impossibilities. Todavía puedes llamar al Dios que no sabe imposibilidades. And the word of the Lord says, Remember the Lord who is great and glorious. Recuerda a Dios que es grande y glorioso. Remember him. Remember his power. Remember what he's done. Recuerda su poder. Recuerda lo que él ha hecho. Remember how he got you through. Recuerda como él te ha sacado. Remember that he's in control and he's never let you down. Recuerda que él está en control y él nunca te ha fallado. Remember that he knows the end result and he knows that you win. Recuerda que él sabe el resultado y tú ganarás la batalla. Remember that he loves you and he won't leave you there to suffer forever. Recuerda que él te ama y él no te va a dejar ahí en esta situación sufriendo. Remember who he is. Remember that he has power. Remember that he can do the impossible. Remember that he can take you out of any pit. Remember that he can open doors no man can shut. Remember that he can turn things around in your favor. Remember that he can pick you up and set your feet upon a rock. Remember that he can give you the strength that you need when you have none. Recuerda que él te puede dar fuerza cuando no tienes. Recuerda que él te puede levantar y poner sobre una roca firme. Recuerda que él te puede ayudar cuando nadie más te puede ayudar. Recuerda que él puede abrir una puerta en tu favor que nadie puede cerrar. Recuerda que él puede cambiar las cosas en tu vida por tu favor. Remember, it says remember that he is great and he is glorious. He doesn't stop being great. He doesn't stop being glorious. He doesn't stop being powerful. I understand what you've been going through and I feel for you, my brother. I feel for you, my sister, but I'm also encouraged tonight because if you're going through something, then God sent me here to let you know that he is still great and he's about to be great in your situation. Yo siento por ti, mi hermano. Yo siento por ti, mi hermana, por lo que has estado pasando. Pero también yo estoy emocionada y estoy animada en esta noche. Porque si estás pasando por una dificultad, Dios me ha mandado a decirte en esta noche que Él todavía sigue siendo grande y Él va a ser grande en tu favor y en tu situación. I don't know if you're hearing me tonight, church. But He says, remember... Remember how easy it is for us to forget the good and remember the bad, but it's time right now that as a church, we begin to remember the moments that God poured his presence down in this place, and we begin to feel revival. We begin to feel stirring up within our spirits. Is somebody with me tonight? Can you remember the moments that we saw people begin to walk upon the altar that we thought would never give their lives to God, but all of a sudden they walked up and they said, I need a savior. 
truly is the one true God and there is no other God above him. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the one I serve. He is the one I look to. He is the one I depend upon. Do you remember the moment that you realized that God loved you regardless of your failures, regardless of your faults, regardless of your errors, regardless of your sin? You remember the moment that you felt God's love surround you and you knew that there was something better for your life. Recuerde de los momentos cuando estabas en errores y estabas en pecado, pero el Señor vino con su amor y te abrazó y de repente sentías en tu corazón, yo tengo propósito, yo no tengo que estar viviendo en este, en este error. Do you remember? Do you remember when you came in here with an ache and a pain and all of a sudden God began to pour his power upon you and you walked out feeling like a brand new person? Recuerdas cuando estabas entrando con, con dolor en tu espalda, con dolor en los pies, con dolor en el, en el pescuezo, con dolor en la cabeza, pero de repente creíste que Dios pudiera sanar tus heridas y con su presencia vino hacia tu cuerpo y de repente saliste una persona nueva. You left a new person when you thought nobody could understand what you were going through. All of a sudden God spoke directly into your spirit. God spoke directly into your heart and he said, I know what you're going through and I'm making a way. Recuerda ese momento cuando estabas pensando, nadie sabe de lo que yo estoy pasando, nadie entiende lo que yo estoy sintiendo, pero de repente Dios habló directamente a tu corazón, él habló directamente a tu espíritu y algo cambió adentro de ti y de repente tenías propósito and all of a sudden you had a purpose and the anxiety and the depression that you felt just left your spirit. Do you remember that? Recuerdes de eso? Do you remember, church? Do you remember when we started believing that God would pour out in the house of refuge on Joseph Street and we began to see the people pour in and we had to look for a new building because it couldn't contain what God was doing? Do you remember? Recuerde cuando teníamos un edificio más pequeño y Dios empezó a trabajar y nuestro pastor empezó a... He began to rebuild the building and he began to fix it and he began to get everything in order believing that we were about to outgrow that building and all of a sudden God began to pour out in that building and we began to see the hand of God move. Do you remember? Recuerde esa iglesia. Recuerdes como Dios te ha sacado cuando no había manera de salir. Do you remember how God took you out when there was no way for you to get out on your own? I'm here to let somebody know tonight you need to remember. The word of the Lord continues on and it says, Fight for your friends. Your families and your home. Pelea por tus amigos, por tu familia y tu casa. Can I come down? Where's David Yera? David Yera, would you come please? The word of the Lord says, fight for your families. Fight for your home and fight for your friends. This is Brother David Yera. Brother David Yera lost his father a few months ago. He's been going through it, church. Él está pasando por una dificultad. Él perdió su papá hace unos meses. But I want you to understand something tonight. Pero quiero que entiendan algo. The word of the Lord says you fight for your friends, you fight for your family, you fight for your home. There may be times in our lives that we feel like we don't have a fight left. Va a haber ocasiones en nuestras vidas donde sentimos que ya no tengo fuerza para luchar. I've been there. You have stood ahí, iglesia. We feel like we don't have a fight left. We feel like we don't have any strength. We feel like we don't know how we're going to go on. Things attack us. Things bring us down. Things hurt us. But the word of God says fight for your church. You fight for your family. You fight for your friends. When you can't fight, we fight for you. Now I want you to understand something tonight. Brother Eric, Brother Josh, would you come quickly?
safely. We understand that we go through difficult times in our lives. We understand that we go through things that we don't understand. But what the word of God is saying is you fight, meaning you defend him. You protect him. If he has no fight left in him, you fight for him. If he can't go on, you carry him through. If he feels defeated, you pick him up and you let him know everything's going to be all right. If he has nothing left, you let you be strong enough for him. Church, this is what we need to do for each other. People are going through some things. People are having some hardships. People are losing loved ones. And it is up to us to fight for each other. I will fight for you when you have no fight left. I will fight for you when you can't lift up your sword. I will fight for you when you don't know how you're going to make it. And it's time for us to acknowledge tonight. He's been going through some things. And I thank God that he hasn't missed a step. I thank God that he's continuing on. But there may be nights that he feels hurt. And he doesn't understand. And there's people here that fight for him. Would you fight for one another? We want to rise to another level as a church. We want to rise to another level as a people. We want to rise to another level as a ministry. This is part of what we need to do in order to reach the levels God has for us. We leave no man behind. No dejamos ninguno atrás.